After revealing the fact that a Tesla Semi has now done 250,000 miles in the last 18 months, Elon Musk revealed some things a lot of people don't actually know about the advantages to the Tesla Semi. Here's what they are. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Great to have you with us. You're watching The Electric Viking. If you want to support the channel, which um, I really appreciate everyone who does, because obviously this wouldn't be possible without you, you can do so via Patreon. I'll put a link in the description, or you can support us as a YouTube member. Now, one of the big advantages to electric trucks is the fact that you can roll them down a hill. Remember Nikola? Remember their, their truck, which no one knows what it was powered by because it was powered by nothing. Remember they rolled it down a hill and made a video about it. And anyway, Trevor Milton eventually went to jail and all that stuff there. Of course, I'm joking here. But the great thing about electric cars also applies to electric trucks. When you stop at a traffic light, what happens, right? You recharge your battery and you don't use your brakes. You just use your regen braking, which isn't a thing that wears out. It just recharges your battery pack. So you save a lot of money on brake pads and you save a lot of money when it comes to um, energy efficiency. It's also safer. Going downhill in a Tesla Semi is much safer than an internal combustion or diesel powered truck. Diesel powered trucks don't have regen braking. Electric ones usually do. Now, obviously the Semi, the Tesla Semi does, and it uses strong regen braking to not only regain 80% of the energy it took to go uphill, that's incredible efficiency, but it slows the vehicle down so no braking at all is necessary. Apparently the Tesla Semi uses all three motors to regen brake, and diesel uses a lower gear, which causes it to use extra fuel and still has to use brakes. So yeah, already electric trucks and particularly the Tesla Semi are at a huge advantage. Now, Tesla focus on efficiency enormously and they've done that with the Semi. And that's why the Semi can do 500 miles of range on a single, on a single charge, which is incredible. Now, the fact that the Semi uses all three electric motors to regen brake gives it an enormous ability to recapture that energy. But I mean, I don't know if this is entirely true because it sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? 80% of the energy used to get up the hill um, goes back into the battery by going down the hill, the same hill. If that is in fact true, that is remarkable. Now, Tesla says the low cost of ownership, improved safety, better range and performance are just a few ways the Semi is the best commercial vehicle available. Now, I can't attest to this. I haven't looked at other Semi trucks that well. I've looked at some of them. Their range is definitely lower than the Tesla Semi. There is a new Volvo Semi that looks quite good and a new Mercedes one. So we'll see how those go. But we do know that having an electric truck is also safer because you can get up hills as well. That's one of the big disadvantages of a diesel powered Semi. They go up hills extremely, extremely slowly when they're loaded. Uh, electric Semis, and in particular the Tesla Semi, have an enormous amount of torque. In fact, more than double the torque of a diesel Semi and therefore they can get up hills with a steep gradient without having to slow down to going 20, 30, 40 miles an hour. Now, although the Tesla Semi is still going through pilot program stages, we now know that Tesla plan on making 50,000 a year, and we know more about the Semi than ever before with a presentation from the engineering head for the Semi program, who is Dan Priestley. The Semi will ramp up to 50,000 units. Tesla plans to develop new configurations of the Semi so they can be used for different applications and be available at different prices. Efficiency is working at an incredible, I mean, much better than what we thought. It's 100 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers traveled. That's staggering numbers. PepsiCo has been the Semi's main contributor during the pilot program. And they talked about the various things that they have recognized since around 90 Semi's were delivered one and a half years ago to the company. Many PepsiCo drivers who have been able to use the Tesla Semi do not believe it is worth going back to a traditional diesel vehicle. And apparently it's actually helped driving, um, drive job retention. People aren't leaving the company because it's so much easier to drive the Semi and they, they think, well, why would I go back to having to drive a diesel one? It was so much more stressful. Musk commented on some of the advantages. He said, compared to diesel, Tesla Semi trucks have a lot more acceleration, uphill power and computer controlled safety features like jackknifing protection. So they're more fun, and safer to drive. Now, I don't know about being fun. I mean, driving something this big would kind of freak me out. I'm sure you get used to it though. But I think these advantages would be huge. Remember, you know, in traffic, when uh, you see trucks and often people are 
kind of going around the truck and merging straight into their lane to try and get ahead of them. That's a bit stressful for a driver. You're having that happen to you all the time. But with an electric truck that can accelerate quickly, that kind of thing is much, much less likely to happen to you. So you're not going to need to have to put your brakes on all the time with these morons, you know, basically kind of coming up from behind you and going right in front of you in order to turn left, turn right, or just stop at the next traffic light. The semi has the potential, says Tesserati, to be the most disruptive and potentially groundbreaking product other than the robo-taxi in Tesla's entire lineup. And do you guys agree with this? I mean, do you think that the semi could be the most disruptive vehicle? If Tesla's going to make 50,000 of these a year, then I think their rivals have no choice, right, but to um, basically go electric. Because companies like PepsiCo are saying, yeah, it's much better choice than having diesel. Um, therefore, if you're Pepsi, would you want to place an order with anyone else? Probably not. And this is going to happen to other companies. So this disruption could be enormous. The company has already managed to completely disrupt the passenger electric vehicle sector. Transforming the commercial industry would be groundbreaking. Now, speaking of commercial industry, Cadle, the world's biggest battery manufacturer, they have now batteries that are intended for electric trucks. They've just revealed them within the last few months. There's two different types. One of them has an energy density of around about 175 watt hours per kilogram. Similar energy density, slightly better than BYD's blade battery, but they're rated to last for, that battery is rated to last for 1 million kilometers. And they say that's the battery warranty. So it's actually rated, they cable say it'll last for 1.5 million, but they warranty it for 1 million at a minimum 80% of original battery capacity. So if the battery capacity drops below 80%, by the time you hit a million kilometers, they will replace the battery pack. It also has a 20 year warranty. Now, there is a more energy dense version of that battery pack. It has a 200 watt hours per kilogram energy density. And that is actually much higher energy density than most companies' LFP batteries. It's actually even higher energy density than Geely's new short blade battery. Typically, a semi truck lasts around 750,000 miles, traveling around 45,000 miles per year on average. Most lifespans, therefore, are around 15 years. So is it possible, therefore, if a typical semi lasts around 750,000 miles, you can get more range out of an electric semi. I think it is, and we don't know for sure yet, but if you think about it, 1.5 million kilometers, that is obviously more than 750,000 miles. Plus, you have the other advantages like not having to replace your brakes frequently, um, being able to regen, uh, get more of that energy when you're going downhill, and then obviously saves you costs, running costs, Electricity is significantly cheaper as well than diesel. Now, keep in mind as well, governments are obviously um, subsidizing electric trucks. So companies can get some pretty big subsidies to go electric. And I think this is all a big positive. Massive disruption is going to come to this industry. It could be a huge driver of growth for any company that takes this seriously. Or if they don't, it'll mean, well, they could be a little bit like Kodak or at least like Nokia. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching.